Hi, I'm Zemless, and today is Saturday, which means it's time for a new FL Basics tutorial. This is a continuation of the series on hardware, and this one is about the timbre section, this stuff up here. And this is, for all intents and purposes, the main origination of processing within Harmer. So if we right click this window, we get this. Timber one harmonic, harmonic, harmonic label, label. Now, uh, we zoom, zoom in really far, we start to see these lines and each of these lines represents uh, an individual harmonic. And you can, you can see how there's these light and dark sections and then they get bigger. And these represent individual uh, octaves. So over here we have the a harmonic one, the first octave, it's just one harmonic, the harmonic two. It's the second, uh, well, I guess it's technically the plus one octave. So it's the first octave, and it's two harmonics, so the fifth and the fifth and an octave. And then harmonic uh, three, or harmonic five rather, begins the third octave, and ends the harmonic uh, eight. Yeah, numbers. So as you see, they get bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually they get huge. And this, this last octaves, except for the very last couple of harmonics, uh, occupy humongous amounts of harmonics. So let's see, this last, this, uh, this octave, octave seven, octave eight, I guess is what I wanted. Octave eight starts at uh, harmonic 256 and goes up until harmonic 512. So that's 256 harmonics that are in that one octave for the high level. Now what this line represents is that um, all of them are on at the same level. And that generates a saw wave when it's played together. We can kind of see that going on here. Now, uh, now this window that we're looking at here, we see a saw wave. What we're actually looking at is um, the sum of a crap ton of sine waves, because that's what it is. This is is it's adding together a crap ton of sine waves, at sine harmonics, and that's what all of this represents. So if I do something like this, or rather, let's say this, you can see the wave actually changing calculation as I uh, determine that certain frequencies or certain harmonics are going to be louder than other harmonics. And it can have interesting ramifications on the shape. Now, if you notice if I make mix over to this other one over here, it's a, saw, it's a square wave. And if I were to right click it, we get this. Now what this is, is this, this is a wave line. This is one line set to wave and it's, uh, ex it's distributed as such that what it's basically doing is turning off every uh, odd harmonic, every even harmonic, yeah. Turning off every even harmonic. So two and four and six and eight are turning off, but one and three and five and seven are all still on. And you can even see this being the case when I, when I uh, change the fade over here is that these harmonics are just being turned off as I fade over to it. And uh, by default, that's the original, that's what um, the second timbre window does. It changes to that. However, we can change this. We can change this to, be, to being just another saw wave. Like, why, why would we do that? Well, um, Harmer has, a, the timbre windows in particular, has a particular ability to uh, resynthesize any, anything you drop in it. Like single cycle waveforms are recommended, but it will do a good job resynthesizing literally anything else you put in there. Um, we have some shapes. Let's grab a shape. So, like, something interesting. Where's citrus? Yeah. So if I drop that in there, it's a fairly weird, like, a waveform. Yeah. So this is timber one. If we go to timber two, though, we see this is this is still even, but the waveform changed. It even sounds weird. So what's up with that? Well, uh, what this actually does, what the timber, the timber two actually does, is it multiplies. It doesn't multiply, I guess it adds, technically. I mean, there's different options to do it with, but generally what ends up happening is that um, th this this is applied to uh, the original uh, timbre information. So if I were to change this back to a wave, and let's see, did I do the right one? Yes. Let's reset this for a second, just make sure I did this right. I didn't uh, reset everything because part of the reset this process is that it changes the harmonic phase, which uh, as you can see here, got weird. So let's reset that. All right, so I did not do the, I didn't do this right. So let's go back to the default for a second. 
this is, it, gets, it gets a little weird, but I want to I want I want to illustrate this as clear a way as possible, just to ensure that I don't confuse people. Mm, so, all right, I'm gonna drop in the shape. So in order to make this shape, it changed uh, the harmonic level in this window. We can see here, this is the harmonic level. It's also uh, plainly clear in the image, what's, what happened there. But if you look at um, the second harmonic, it still has that same wave, but it still got screwed up. And that's began because of this harmonic phase change that happened. And if I were to reset this, you see it's actually a square again. But this also affected um, the the direct resynthesis of the waveform the first time. It still sounds kind of the same, but it's not actually the same. Now that's because harmonic phase is shared between timbres one and two. See, timbre two, you can see when I'm playing it, it's the same number and organization of harmonics. But the reason why it sounds differently is because the phase is different. And so this harmonic phase window is actually pretty important. And what the harmonic phase does it is it has the same interface as uh, the timbre section where all these lines represent individual harmonics and they're all here. And you can see that here, these, this um, reset the system determined the phase change of all these individual harmonics. Um, I'm saying that you can change the phase of all individual harmonics. So that's pretty dupe, pretty dupe. Even if I were to you know, reset it and then go there myself and just like, pfft, screw with it. Suddenly we have a very different sound. And also suddenly the timbre windows have wacky looking waveforms. These waveforms are the, calcula like the visual calculations of the phase factored in with the actual timbres and such like that. But the timbres themselves are still the same. The harmonic level, the gain, it's just the phase changed. So there's a lot of fun to be had with that. Um, over here we have start and random for phase timing. And what start does is it you know it starts, this is basically like uh, if this, if this setting is zero. So it starts at the beginning. Over here it starts at 180, which I think is should be different. But that's, I guess, what's up. And it just basically means what at what point in the waveform does it begin? It's pretty uh, an inaudible difference when we're playing with such high frequency notes, but that's what that is. Uh, the randomness is actually kind of fun. What the phrase randomness does is it has spectral random versus running, and I forget which one is which. I think spectral random is the normal one. No, running is the normal one, and then spectral random is is fun. What this means is that it changes the start phase of every individual harmonic. kind of pseudo squelchy sound you're hearing. I wonder if that would be more clear if I distorted it. Yep, that's the one. That's changing the phase of every, of every harmonic differently, independently from each other. So that's a lot of fun. Yes. And over here we have uh, various uh, interaction modes in between uh, the... the uh, the waveforms of the timbre. Let's see if I change a couple of these, um, the results will be different. But th this doesn't actually change what the, the windows represent. It just changes what it does, what the second one does to the first. Which can be a lot of fun. And there's this pluck one. And what this does apparently is that when you have it engaged, it will pluck those frequencies away at uh, high pluck values. Which is to say, if I was over here, that's a very long pluck decay. But if I'm over here, it it plucked away the the particular harmonics that I set uh, in the timbre one. Which 
is actually very fascinating. So that's kind of cool. And over here we have a bunch of uh, controls of harmonics because this is basically the harmonic control window module area thing as denoted by this dotted line here. And over here we have uh, sub harmonics. I'm actually going to go to default to illustrate what these do. So these are harmonics that are related, related in key in any way to the fundamental tone, but they're not actually directly harmonic to the fundamental tone. Except for that one, which is an octave lower. That one, that's a fifth. That one, that's a tenth. That's a uh, plus, I guess it's a nine, because it's technically a third. Not a fourth, it's a third. It's a, th it's a third. Yes, it's 11. I don't remember theory. Anyway, it's a it's a major major third on top. Now this button lets you turn around to either around the fundamental, which is what this is, to below the fundamental. So it means that these are now all below the fundamental, and they get really really low. So if you have like a really high pitched tone. things can be done with that if you want to then we have harmonic protection now what this does is when like say you have a filter going around harmonic protection will ensure that a particular set of harmonics are always on regardless of what the filter or the phaser or whatever else is doing <laughs> Now, um, this is actually news to me. Someone pointed this out to me on my Facebook. But over here in this window, we have harmonic protection. Actually, like, it sets which ones are set. Like, by default, this is the graph for, but you can you can protect whole swaths of harmonics. You can protect 90 with the sub if you want to. I don't know why you want to do that, but you can. I also just noticed that there's this harmonic randomness uh, thingy, which I guess uh, is applicable to the random the randomness knob over here. And I had I still have the the wave line engaged, which was causing that hilarity. So yeah, you can see definitely the effect that it has on a uh, sound when you engage harmonic randomness on the spectral random side of that's the left side of this knob. That's a lot of fun. What else we got over here? All right, how about clipping? So clipping is this the eye over here. And we have uh, various types of clipping. Well, basically what this does is, uh, it's a specialized filter for the harmonics specifically. It uh, basically hard clips the, uh, harmonics in, in various ways and this is usually all there's different options it acts as it, it, it the result of it is, a, is kind of like a very interesting filter uh so that's a lot of fun over here we have fx and dry mix pretty straightforward this is the uh the volume envelope uh time domain oh, i had to clip all the way off because i said the wrong kind Uh, this is the envelope control over here. This is just volume. And then uh, over here we have a, a bunch of very interesting options. So we have auto gain, which uh, keeps it at certain levels. And then up here we have uh, velocity to certain controls. Uh, this one uh, uh, tags velocity to envelope attack time, which I don't even have engaged. But if I did, I'm going to turn this off. If I... Low, lower velocity values create a longer attack time. And there's also uh, wait, uh, velocity to volume envelope attack, attack scale. The more pronounced effect of that. And then release scale as well. You can even have all three on at once if you want. So you have that controlled by velocity, which is a lot of fun. It's pretty much it for this entire little module, I think. I believe this covers lots of very interesting things. So 
the takeaway the takeaway from this is that Harmer can resynthesize any sound into a waveform. I really do mean any sound. Like I accidentally dropped in um, an audio file Come on. one time, and it was uh, very interesting. So let me let me. Come on! Come on! That was it. Yeah. That's what that sounds like. It doesn't sound like much, but if I turn it way to hell down. You can kind of hear it doing it. You might be thinking, how the hell could it possibly do that? It's just a single cycle waveform now, at least now it is. Well, it has a lot to do with the phase changes happening here. With the phase starting, we're also we're also hilariously turned down, like in pitch, like really very low. So the the oscillation of the, of the waveform is very long. But uh, when certain harmonics are audible is being determined by the phase of each individual harmonic, which you can see here as a result of the resynthesis is quite extreme. And then, of course, the timbre changes in levels are all just nuts. <laughs> Looks like it's giving me the finger. Like if this were just a saw wave and I were that low. That's what that saw it would sound like. Right. So that's pretty powerful. You can change and mix in between uh, this other window, which by default is set up to be a, a square wave. At least it's set up to take away certain harmonics at a certain level, which means that whatever else is happening in the first timbre window, that's the effect it's going to have, which might not always result in a saw wave sounding thing square wave sounding thing but when it is all wave it will result in a square wave in fact pretty much whenever you put anything come on and dance now in that first window what that effect in the timbre 2 window has will appear as a live calculation inside this thing <laughs> yeah. oh yeah let's let's put an actual shape in there huh And phase random, this is cool. It's also a good takeaway to have from this. This section is just weird and nebulous, and there's a reason why I didn't start with that. You think, like, if I'm going to talk about Harmer, why didn't I just start with that? Because that seems to be where everything is from. And, yeah, it kind it kind of is, but um, it's more, Harmer is more about what you do to the harmonics you have than how many harmonics that you start with, like what how you start with the harmonics. So that's why I want to get all that up there first so that you get that to that have all that in your mind using just the basic um timbre settings before we start talking about timbre settings because it's a little weird and like i may have misrepresented some of it but i'm pretty sure i got that right because i did actually read the manual before doing this particular tutorial because i knew that i was gonna be a little bit foggy on uh some of that yeah This is very interesting to mess around with waveforms and reset the system sometimes. Yeah, so if you have any questions about any of that, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day. The nicest day that ever happened.